Glad to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm here with Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin, and they're with the Retirement Education Foundation. They're both financial instructors, and we have a great program lined up for you. Throughout the show today, we'll let you know how you can attend one of their classes held at local universities or virtually. You can attend online in the comfort of your own home. So be listening for that. Now, guys, it's great to be back with you today. I want to talk about, oh, I guess we could call it a rule of thumb that we hear a lot in retirement planning. It's called the 4% rule. And I thought we could spend some time talking about this because I think a lot of people still think that's a pretty valid rule. Um, and, and maybe we could dive in and start at the beginning. What exactly is it? So, so Megan, I feel like Paul and I, and, and you notice Paul's not with us today. We've got Michael, the great Michael with us today. We talk about this rule a lot. I mean, I think we've t done probably a couple of shows on this rule. We reference this rule all the time. In, in fact, I think it's something that we've made a specific point to address and talk a lot about because we are really concerned about this 4% rule and have been for a while. And what's interesting, Michael, is we're starting to see the industry recognizing the problems that we've been talking about associated with this rule. So let's start with what is the rule? And the rule has been around, well, it's been around a long time, but I guess it was coined by, what's the guy's name in 1994? William Bangin. What, William Bangin, right, coined it. But we know it existed prior to this. And, and the rule basically says this. If you take 60% of your money and put in stocks, and you put, take 40% of your money and put it in bonds, if you're 65 years old, taking out 4% per year to live on out of your investments would be a general rule to follow. And if you followed that rule, most of the time you wouldn't outlive your money. It really is our industry's default. It's like the one size fits all solution for everybody 65 years old. This is likely what you're going to get. If anyone's providing you some computer-generated retirement plan, it's based upon this rule. The probability dial where you can see it's in green and what percent likelihood you, you are to not outlive your money, that's all based. All of these platforms our industry uses, literally every one right now, is based upon this 4% rule which is now our industry is telling and academia is telling us is dead, right? I mean, it's not going to work for the baby boomers from this point forward. And so what I thought we would do today, Michael and Megan, is that we would talk a little bit, ex continue to explain a little bit more about the rule and history and why people have used it. But now why everyone in our industry, I think it was on the second page or first page of the Bloomberg two days ago, all the famous people, uh, Susie Orman, Dave Ramsey, Jeremy Siegel, they're all talking about the problem with the 60-40 rule and why it's not going to work. Uh, we, we're talking about regularly. The rule, new rule actually is like, I don't know, 2.5%, 2.8% is all that you can afford to take out and live on without outliving your money, with a less likelihood chance of outliving your money. And so we're going to talk about all the problems with it and the way our industry, the mistakes our industry is making with how they are pivoting um, and trying to adjust for this rule so they can continue to maintain a most profitable business model for the industry. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Like we will mention just about at the end of every segment, at the core of everything we talk about in our radio show is education. Before you retire, if you're retired, before you start buying investments and making decisions on what to take, when to take it, what to live on, how much you can live on, Social Security, before you make any of these decisions, we are going to encourage you to take a seven-hour course that we have been teaching at all the major universities for almost 10 years now. It's offered by a nonprofit organization. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can attend this seven-hour course that helps you prepare to and through retirement. If you'd like to register for one of those courses, you can go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800-240-8981. And we are glad to have you with us here on the program today. 
Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Kirk and Michael, as we talk about the 4% rule, one thing is clear. No one wants to run out of income in retirement. So let's dive into what we're going to talk about here on the program today so our listeners know what kind of ground is going to be covered. So, Michael, at the core of these general rules, it, it's these one-size-fits-all solutions our industry comes up with, particularly retirees, because it is so much more complicated than just choosing investments. Why do they keep coming up with these simple rules? So essentially what they're doing is they're trying to maximize scalability. They're trying to meet as many people as they can in one, two, five, ten hours, whatever it is. They don't want to spend time developing customized individual plans for everybody. They want to spend as little time as possible to develop a rule that fits sort of the, the general population. And they say that's good enough and go with that. So, and what, what you're going to learn from this class is all the things that are wrong with just this particular rule. And there's tons of them. I mean, they've come up with so many different rules of thumb for retirees, general rules of thumb, Susie Ormans, the Ramseys, they're, they're, I don't know how that compliance, how the regulators allow this because it's really damaging for a lot of people. And please, if you're listening today, stick around for the show because you got to understand where the traps are in retirement and it's all based around your income planning. Our industry distracts you. It's kind of, don't look over here, but look over here. And they have you all focusing on, they have some secret voodoo magic with their investment selection. They know how to manage money so special that you're not going to outlive your money. And your investments aren't what's going to drive performance in retirement. It's going to be your income planning. When do I take money out of which accounts at what age and how do I allocate the money at the right times to take the money from those accounts? And so in our class, we teach almost every two weeks a seven-hour course. It's offered by a nonprofit organization called the Retirement Education Foundation. For 10 years, we've been teaching at U of M, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, Oakland University, and right in our learning center in Livonia. We're also now streaming these seven-hour courses so you can sit in your home during COVID, be protected, and learn and prepare for retirement. Make a $29 donation to charity and you can attend one of these courses and get a 200-page textbook. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Michael straight ahead. Glad to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you'd like to get registered for an upcoming course, and remember, this is a deep dive into retirement planning. Why? Well, so you can get it right. You've got one chance to retire. You want to make sure you have all the information necessary to make that happen. You can get registered two simple ways. A phone call, 800-240-8981. Again, that's 800 240 8981, or you can go online to the website, retirementplanningedu.com. That's retirementplanningedu.com. Talking about something many of us have heard about before, right, Kirk and Michael, the 4% rule. And we're just going to take a half step back before we keep going. I want to stop here, Michael, and just reassess why exactly was the the 4% rule coined in the first place? Why did we start using it? So the 4% rule was typically a more stable approach to income planning. People didn't know how much can I afford to take in retirement, how much do I need to save in order to retire, given a a desired amount of income. And the 4% rule was a pretty wide uh, net cast for people to be able to say, this is how much you need if you want 4% of this base, that's how much you can have for income reliably without ideally uh, spending all your money. So, Michael, when we've looked at the 60-40, historically speaking, well, I should say for at least the last 30 years, prior to this most recent, I I would say the last a couple of years, so from the 80s through until, let's call it 2015 through 2017, right around there, when people used the 4% rule, 
they would only outlive their money about 10% of the time. That's why it was a really good default rule for our industry. They felt comfortable. If you just put 60% of your money in stocks and you just put 40% of your money in bonds and you took out 4%, you'd only outlive your money about 10% of the time. That was the rule. Which for the industry, that 10% failure rate is good enough for them. Yeah, they were thrilled. Because again, simple, scalable. They can meet a lot of people. They can just throw it in their little software, spit it out in a spreadsheet showing you take 4% out of your accounts. And here's your retirement plan. It took them 30 minutes. Done. Just to put some perspective around how long a retirement plan should take in our private practice, and I know when we're on the radio, we're always talking about our the nonprofit, we're the financial instructors for an education uh, foundation, but we do have a private practice. And in our private practice, when we construct a retirement plan, it takes us 20 to 50 hours to build a plan, right? So because 10% failure isn't good enough, neither is, by the way, what the, that, that rule will produce today, that same 60-40 rule today, taking out 4% a year, will fail. It's almost 30% of the time now. Right, Michael? Correct. Yep. So we, ended, so we talked a little, explained why they've used the 4% rule. Why 60-40, Michael? Why have, has 60-40 worked for the last 30 years? But by the way, it didn't work prior to that either. If you look at a chart prior to the the 80s 60 40 4 percent would have failed a lot that's just a new phenomenon since the 80s that has began to work why the 60 40 though so they were searching for an allocation that when they back tested it it wasn't too volatile because they knew that retirees can't deal with a lot of volatility but it provided enough growth and income for them to live their lifestyles and 60 40 from the 80s on from the 80s to about 2015 provided that good mix. The 60% stocks had decent enough growth, and the 40% bonds provided income, and the bond appreciation also supported that as well. So historically, uh, I keep saying historically, let me rephrase. Since the 80s, the other thing that that a 60-40 allocation did, Michael, was, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael's the financial analyst here, right? So correct me if I'm wrong, Michael. You're the one that does all the research and looks at historical data. Since the 80s until about 2015, when we saw volatility in the stock market, when equities would go down and, and be volatile, what did bonds usually do for people? Bonds would typically appreciate, go up in value, which would make up for the losses in their stock portfolio, which was the whole point of having the bonds with the stocks. They would sort of offset each other during moments of volatility. We call that uh, correlation, less cor- being less correlated. So- moving in the opposite direction as the other investments you have, or at least staying flat, not being correlated, not seeing the same volatility when the equity is going down, the bonds would stay flat or appreciate. So why, since the 80s, have bonds, perf- and let's talk about the numbers. I, I think it's since the 80s, bonds have performed at just about, just under 7%, right? We've been in a massive bond bull market because interest rates, in the 80s were in the high teens. Today, they're almost at zero. They've been falling since the 80s. So as interest rates fall, bond prices rise. I think people sometimes get confused by that, Michael. So so I'm going to restate that. So what, what Michael said was a very important factor to why the industry defaulted to this rule. Is interest rates fall, as they begin to go down, the value of the bond you own goes up because if you have a bond that's paying you a higher interest rate than someone can buy today, that makes your bond worth more money. So as the bonds have been falling since the 80s, your bond values have been appreciating. And in fact, I think it was Roger Ibbotson, Nobel Prize winning economist from Yale, just reported some research on this that suggests that 50% of everything people made in their bonds over that 30, 35 year period, half of all their profits was the growth of the bonds. The other half was the interest on the bonds. So the interest of the bonds only produced half of the performance. So what does that mean for everybody that has this 60, 40 going forward when we have interest rates, the lowest that it's ever been and likely to eventually go up? So that means that for people starting today with their bonds, the bonds are paying very, very little because interest rates are so low. 
and interest rates don't have much further to fall, if anywhere to fall. Right. And they'll, they'll no, long, no longer get appreciation either. No, so, they're going to lose money as they go up. So their bonds going, going forward, we've seen this in the past a little bit, and going forward, will no longer be a good source of non-correlation from stocks. They will not provide that hedge against the stock market. And therefore, everyone's scrambling, which we'll talk about what the solutions our industry is proposing in our next segment, which is really scary, and it's the biggest warning today, right? So these are just some of the reasons why you should attend the seven-hour course, get the 200-page textbook at all the major universities. You can attend or you can stay home during COVID, and we'll stream it from those universities directly to you in your own home. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, if you'd like to attend one of our seven-hour courses, you can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. There is much more with Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin straight ahead. Glad you're with us on the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak alongside Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. You can get registered for one of their upcoming courses. And these are taught all around the community at local universities, including Michigan State University, Novi Campus, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University. And these are two-day courses, two days, three hours each day. You can also do a deep dive one day. It's a seven to eight hour course. And why are these so intensive? Well, because in the 21st century, there's a lot to know about retirement planning, getting it right, making sure you have a, a successful retirement, attending one of these courses, is the first step on that road. So to get registered, you can go online to retirementplanningedu.com. That's retirementplanningedu.com. Or you can call to register 800-240-8981. Again, that's 800-240-8981. You know, Michael and Kirk, we talk a lot on the show week in, week out about how we're all living a lot longer. And that longevity, while it's great, it's also a risk, a risk to our income. So many of our listeners want to know, is there a way to make sure my income lasts in retirement? And you say there is. And that's part of what we're talking about. Explain that. It's interesting that you asked that question in the segment because Michael and I just uh, did a video, a weekly thought for our, our private practices that gets sent out and circulated. We also circulated out on Facebook for the foundation too. It's about 20, 30 minute segment. It's usually educational based, right? And we talked about it being one of the most expensive times in history to retire, right? And we provided some great information and so one of the challenges for baby boomers today is, folks, you guys are living a lot longer, a lot longer. I, I think a lot longer than many of you even realize. A 65-year-old male today, their life expectancy is 86-ish years old. And a 65-year-old female is 88 years old. That's their life expectancy, 88 and a half, somewhere in that range. Bigger number is there's a 40% chance that one of the two of you will live until you're 94 years old. What is the what is it like? Fifteen percent chance someone will live until a hundred or five? What is it? Ten percent chance? What was the number? A five to ten percent. Five to ten percent chance. It's crazy. Fifty percent. One of you will live into your nineties. And here's the other scary part. Ready? There's a fifty percent chance that one of you will have cognitive impairment, meaning you're going to start to have memory, mind issues, especially around math. There's a 50% chance, and there's over a 70% chance that you're going to need long-term care. So you're living longer, more expenses, and it's more expensive than ever to retire. And our industry, they're really, honestly, they're scrambling right now, Michael. They're, they're totally scrambling because right now when they use their, what they're called Monte Carlo simulations, you know that dial you guys probably all familiar with that tells you the likelihood of whether or not you're going to outlive your money? It, they're all failing, right? They're, the old playbook fails when they back test it. Right now, if they use their conventional 4% rule, it fails almost 30% of the time. And, and the only way to make it not fail, they have to use like 2.8%. And if they take out, that means taking out 2.8% of your money to live on. Let me translate. If you have a million dollars, that means you can safely take out $28,000 a year to live on. And you only have a 10% chance of outliving your money if you do that. 
That's not good enough. No one's going to accept that. You, the consumer, won't accept that. So our industry is being forced to come up with a different solution. And Michael, it, in this segment alone, I think we're going to carry this over to the next segment because the problem with what they are proposing right now, it's insanity, right? Instead of them investing time to say, well, maybe we need to not be quite as profitable and maybe we just need to spend a little more time with each individual client and construct a custom plan for their situation so that we can get the best outcome to create the most amount of income with the least chance of outliving our money. Instead of doing that, we have to maintain this very profitable 60-40-4% rule model. So how are we going to make this work? And their solution is take more risk. That's their solution. Susie Orman, Dave Ramsey, Jeremy Siegel, they're all saying the same thing. We d- no longer should use 60-40. They're telling retirees to go 75-25% with their allocations. 75% in stocks, 25% in bonds. So finally, finally something we've been screaming about for three years, the industry is acknowledging now that 60-40 has failed. Bonds aren't going to make money over the next 10 to 20 years. They are highly correlated now with equities. It's not a safe place to go. Their solution now is take on more risk for a senior. How is that going to work out, Michael? So we know shifting from a 60-40 to a 75-25, if we have a 2008 market event, a 75-25 portfolio will lose roughly 40 to 45%. <laughs> we have all the data that shows that retirees can't stand, they can't stomach that risk. All these retirees tell us when we meet with them, oh, I got through 2008, I didn't sell, I didn't panic. It's their badge of honor, Michael. They wear it as a badge of honor, and we tell them, you were 40, 45, maybe 50 in 2008. You, now, were, you were employed. Someone was paying you. It was right? much, it's much, much easier to sit on the sidelines and not make changes when the market's tanking, when you're still employed, you still have a, and you still have a paycheck coming in. It's a totally different ballgame in retirement. If you're 65, 70 years old, retired, and you have a 75-25 portfolio because you were told by Susie Orman that's what you need to make your income last, and we have a 2008 event, you lose 45%. You are going to panic. I promise you you're going to panic. I can prove it to you. 30% of the people over the age of 65, 30% of you over 65 panicked with COVID at the bottom, which was the worst thing you could have done because we then, after COVID, had the 50 best days in market history. We are up for the year now. We aren't down this year. So if you panicked, you missed it. Your retirement, if you panicked, your retirement's destroyed. Literally, you are... The chances of you outliving your money increased by 75% if you panicked. And unfortunately, the playbook, the solution that they're going to propose is for seniors to take on more risk. And and let's talk about it next segment, what that means. Because it's very, retirement isn't about logic. It's about emotions when it comes to money. Your relationship with money is going to change. And I want to talk about that next segment. Okay. So again, this is why we're going to urge you before you make any decisions major decisions. You need to spend seven hours going through one of our university courses. We teach it at all the major universities. It's seven hours of education, how to plan to and through retirement, everything, tax planning, income planning, estate planning, investment planning. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. That is it. And you can participate. You can even stream. We'll stream it to you live in your own home, a seven hour course. If you'd like to attend, you can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. Back with Michael and Kirk, straight ahead. Glad you've tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour, back with Kirk and Michael. They're both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you'd like to register for one of their upcoming courses, you are welcome to do that at any time by visiting the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.com. Again, that's retirementplanningedu.com or call to register 800-240-8981. Kirk and Michael, we're talking about income planning here on the show, making sure that our income lasts in retirement, no matter how long that retirement is. Part of that is understanding some of the new rules of retirement planning. Now, Kirk, you say that there's actually 
pretty strong emotional component between investors, retirees, and their money, their finances, and that that relationship with money actually changes. It evolves over time. Walk us through that. Yeah, I think it's, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yes, Megan, I, it, it, there's a really interesting dynamic when it comes to people and their money as they transition from working through until retirement. It's something that I think most baby boomers don't account for and don't appreciate. And I don't think they quite understand because look, we've had a very, very successful generation, the baby boomer generation from a financial perspective. We're going to see the greatest transfer of wealth go from the baby boomers down to their children. It's, I don't know, 70, 75, what is it? Trillion dollars? Billion. Billion. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Billions, trillions. You know how the politicians throw the numbers <laughs> around today. I don't know. Someone was talking about <laughs> trillion the other day. Sorry. So, yeah, it's baby boomers have hu been hugely successful. And so one of the things, you know, we, we've taught thousands of people now between the ages of 50 and 97. In our private practice, we we're responsible for a thousand people and a billion dollars. But literally, we have taught thousands and thousands of people. And one of the biggest disconnects for people is they think that their logical cost-benefit analysis approach to money and finance is going to work in retirement. They discount how that relationship with money is going to evolve, how they're going to be more vulnerable, how no one else is going to be paying them anymore. They're going to have to pay themselves. And so, look, I say this every time we teach a class, Michael, and I think I say this almost every other show we do that older people aren't cheap. I know that's a stereotype they get, right? I, grandma and grandpa were cheap. For some of us, mom and dad are cheap. They're not cheap. They're scared. They're scared because they can't quite connect all the dots. They're scared because they don't know how much they can live on, spend before they outlive their money. They're scared, and you'll notice it. Here's a good giveaway if, to see if you're one of those that don't realize your emotions are driving your decisions. If you're letting short-term market events COVID, recessions, who's being elected, who's being impeached, politics, any economic short-term event. If you're allowing short-term events to drive your decision to go to cash, to change your investment strategies, to take less money out, to not retire this year because Trump's being elected or being impeached or, or Biden's going to be elected. If you're allowing, or COVID happens, so I better not retire. If you're letting short-term market events drive your decisions, then you've already, your relationship with money's already changed, Michael. It's, it's already happened. In a retirement, 30-year retirement, you're going to have a recession. You're going to have a market event every, what, five to seven years? And people don't understand what that feels like when they retire. They've, they've gone through these recessions and depressions and market events while they're working. Right. And they weathered the storm and they think, oh, doing this. It's a different ball game when you're retired. No, you've got a pile of money and you see it go down 20, 30, 40%. And that's all you got. Like, there's no, I can't go back to work. I can't work more hours. I can't delay retirement. The other thing is people think, how many people who are like 58 to 65 say, I'm going to work five more years, seven more years. Like you get to control when you get to retire. Some of you might be lucky enough to control that, but I'm going to tell you, most people, it's an unexpected retirement because of health, because of the economy, recessions, layoffs. It could be a number of things. And so you become much more vulnerable. Or they think that worst comes to worst, I'll go back to work and I'll go back to making $100,000 a year. Sure you will. Well, Ageism is alive and well. <laughs> you sure. won't be able to walk back into the workforce making $100,000 a year in most cases. You won't, and you're going to have to trust us. This, so this is the first time you're ever going to plan for retirement. First time. We've done this thousands of times. Please hear us, right? I mean, it's like telling the neurosurgeon how to do the neurosurgical procedure on your brain. Are you going to go to the neurosurgeon that's done it once, or are you going to go to the, to the person that's done it thousands of times? We've done it thousands of times. We're telling you this is different. Your investments aren't what's going to drive your success in retirement. A plan is, and our industry isn't helping you. They're not giving you good solutions. They're coming up with very general rules that are dangerous. So this, the whole purpose of this segment was to circle back to talk about the solution for the 4% rule today is 75% in stocks, 25% in bonds, which is going to be a lot more volatile a lot more risk, a lot more emotions, 
a lot more people letting short-term market events dictate if you're going on vacation this year or if you're going to do a home improvement in retirement, which is crazy. I'm telling you, you can't predict when you're going to die either. Don't put off something if you can afford to do it, right? So somehow the industry says this is the new rule. And why do they say this rule? Why are they doing this, Michael? Why are they taking on more risk? Why? Because the 60-40 with their projected forward returns, thanks to the lower incomes from the bonds, can no longer satisfy their back tests. So right. instead of failing 10%, now it's failing 30 or 40%. Yep. So their answer is just take more risk. Some, others, aside from the 75-25, some are saying we should be including options, commodities trading, <laughs> and foreign currency trading. Let's talk about that next segment because that is insane. That is truly insane. Michael's getting all worked up. You should see him. He, honestly, that is insane that they're telling retirees to do that. But but when we go, going back to 75-25, 75% stocks, 25% bonds now only fails 10% of the time with the 4% rule. So that's the whole, look, this is the whole purpose our industry is telling you to take more risk because it's the only way they can make their back testing work. It's the only way to make their business model succeed anymore. So- at your risk, we'll just tell older people to take more risk. That's the plan. Oh, and I don't have to worry about it because I know you'll protect your principal. This is craziness, Michael. It's crazy. Please educate yourself about retirement. We started this nonprofit over 10 years ago. We're now teaching these seven-hour courses at all the major universities, Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State, Oakland University. We're also streaming these classes live from our learning center in Livonia during COVID. 200 page textbook, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can attend. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com or call 800-240-8981. Much more with Michael and Kirk straight ahead. Here with Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Glad you tuned in today. Really interesting conversation about your income in retirement. Will it last? Will you have enough? What are the new rules of retirement planning? How can you put those to work for you to have the retirement you want? That's what it's all about. That's what Kirk, Michael, and the team do to help you. So as we talk about this today, Kirk and Michael, I think there are people out there who say, okay, well, if I employ one of these rules of retirement and it doesn't work out, you know, I can just maybe leverage myself a little bit more in the market. That might make up for it. What do you well, think about that approach? Well, I think that's what a lot of people in our industry are, are proposing. They're just telling you to take more risk so that you can take a larger withdrawal rate out, but with more risk comes a greater chance of outliving your money and the more likelihood you're going to panic. You got to trust us. Your relationship with money is going to change. Emotions are going to drive a lot of your decisions as you get older. It may not today right now when you're 60 or 65, but it will. Your first cognitive skill you're going to begin to lose is mathematics, and there's a 50% chance you're going to lose those skills. I mean, that's just the math. That's just the facts. So, You've got a challenge, right? You've got an industry trying to to continue to be profitable, the financial service industry, with a major segment of our population, 10,000 of you baby boomers retiring a day with a playbook. I mean, it's truly, it's a foundational general philosophy our industry has been using for retirees for a while now that is failing. It is not going to work. They've even admitted now it's not going to work. And their greatest solution is one of two things. Take on more risk, not just let's step back, do more advanced planning, eliminate sequence of return risk, making sure I'm taking income from the right places, reduce taxes, like taking time to do planning. No, that's not the solution. That's not what they come up with. They come up with their, their genius ideas. We got to stay profitable. We got to stay transactional. We want to meet as many people as we can and sell you as much as we can. So all we're going to do is keep the old rule, but just increase the amount of equity stock exposure you have so you can take more risk to drive those performances. Michael, I know that they're now proposing a whole nother strategy, which is insane, but I don't know that we addressed what Morgan Stanley, I think now JP Morgan is forecasted, right? So why is the industry totally pivoting right now 
with bonds being so low, I know Morgan Stanley and J.P. Morgan just came out with their 10-year forecast for a 60-40 portfolio from a performance. What are they projecting? So they're expecting over the next 10 years a 60-40 portfolio to return roughly 25 to 3.25%, which is far below the past 50 years average of about 65 to 7%. And why the 4% rule now fails. Correct. So because then they when say- you, when you plug in that 25 to 3.25% return, now your plans are failing if you're taking out 4%. All day, uh, right? So so I, I saw on the, I think it was the cover of Bloomberg two days ago. Their proposal was, now we got Susie Orman, Ramsey, uh, Jeremy Siegel, a lot of people's now saying 75-25, right? Just take on more risk. And those are considered personal fi- finance gurus. So I was shocked to see them just advocate for plain and simple, take more risk. Crazy. And now we're seeing, like you said, on the on the front page of Bloomberg, a mainstream news source an article that's advocating for people to use options trading, commodities trading, and foreign currency trading to juice the returns in their portfolio to supplement their income. The last time I checked, Michael, options, commodity, and currencies are pretty volatile. Incredibly yeah, pretty volatile. high standard deviation, right? They're volatile and they're more complex than stock markets. People don't tend to understand stock markets that well. They understand these tools even less. They're going to get themselves trapped. Uh, uh, taken advantage of? Someone's going to take advantage of them. If, if you start doing options, please please don't trade options in retirement as your retirement plan. I know some of you guys are really advanced. Listen, I've got portfolio managers that manage billion-dollar pension funds that hire us to build their retirement plan. Your investments is not what's going to drive your success in retirement. It is It is truly, and I think next segment, let's talk about that sequence of return risk. Why, when you take that income from which accounts is going to be most critical. See, they're trying to juice performance by using options, commodities, and currencies, or taking a 75% stock portfolio. What they're missing, and they know this, this isn't something they don't know, but it's not easy to do, is if they just mapped out taking their income from accounts that don't have volatility in it, they'll win. They'll be fine. You're not going to outlive your money. You just can't make the mistake to take money out of an account that is down ever. You can't sell. You can't take a withdrawal from an account that is down. If you do, and you do that in the first five years of your retirement, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. Everything that drives performance in retirement is when I take my income from where. That's it. It, the, the investment part is the easiest, the easiest part. So what they say is now get more complex and use more volatile instruments. So exactly, so if you have 60% of your portfolio in stocks and then 40% of your, your, your money in commodities, currencies, and um, options, when, when, how do I take my income? When do I take my income? There is no safe bucket in that allocation. Zero. Where is the zero volatility bucket to take my income from? It's dangerous, Michael. Every academia, every university that has done research about retirement planning all says the same thing. Your single greatest risk in retirement is something called sequence of return risk. The single greatest risk in your retirement is taking money out of an account that is down, that has volatility. You can't take your income from volatility. That's why the bonds aren't going to work, right? I mean, that's why bonds aren't the solution anymore. Right. They're no longer providing the safety during volatile stock markets. No. So you have to be really clever about income planning when you're withdrawing and making sure you have buckets of money at the right times that don't have volatility. You're not going to get that with a 75-25 portfolio. You're certainly not going to get that with options, currencies, and commodities. (laughs) Are you kidding me? So please- I hope you hear the passion in our voice, particularly this week. This is a really tough time. You've got to invest in your retirement by attending a seven-hour course. We're teaching at all the major universities, or we will stream it to you so you can stay in your own home. There's a 200-page textbook, seven hours of education. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register for one of these classes, go to retirementplanningedu.com retirementplanningedu.com or call 
240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Michael straight ahead. Glad you're tuned in today to the Retirement Education Hour. Have you registered for one of Kirk and Michael's upcoming courses? You know, they teach courses all throughout our community at local universities, including Oakland University, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, and Michigan State University Novi Campus. Two-day courses, those are three hours each day, or one deep dive, about an eight-hour course on a Saturday, you can register at 800-240-8981. Call that number today to get signed up. You can also attend a class virtually. So in this time of COVID, you can learn right from the comfort and safety of your own home. 800-240-8981, or go to retirementplanningedu.com. Now, Kirk, Michael, we've been talking quite a bit today about income, how to preserve it, how to make sure it's there for us, and how to institute some of the new rules of retirement planning. You know, we talked about the 4% rule, the 60-40 rule, and how some tweaks had to be made, right, to make sure that our money does last. In retirement, we've talked about these problems. I really want to zero in on the solutions here as we round out our show today. What are some of the really just go-to solutions you have for retirees right now? It starts with income planning, and it's managing something called sequence of return risk. Every university, Wharton, Yale, Harvard, Ross, anyone who's done any research about retirement planning will all tell you the same thing. Your biggest risk is something called sequence of return risk. So if you can solve that problem, your chances of outliving your money decrease significantly and your performance will be best. So very quickly, sequence of return risk is simply taking income, taking withdrawals out of accounts that have volatility. If that account that you are taking income from is down in value, it's lost. The portfolio, the market is down. There's volatility. It's, if it's just down a little bit in the first five years of retirement, if you're taking withdrawals from an account that's down, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. It's the single biggest risk, and it's the number one solution. Making sure you know when to take income from which accounts to minimize sequence of return risk and then reduce taxes, being able to understand how to bracket manage, when to take Social Security, how to blend the income. Look, our average client in our private practice is saving two to $400,000 over their lifetime in taxes just by being efficient with their income planning. That extends the life of their money, right? It had nothing to do with the investments they were in. If I save you $300,000 in taxes, that means your money lasts that much longer, right? Right. And sequence of return risk, it's a difficult concept for people to get their arms around at first because everyone knows, everyone thinks that this, oh, well, the stock market returns, call it 10% on average over a, a full lifetime. That means I'll be fine. Well, the stock market doesn't just return 10% every single year. It has some great years and it has some terrible years. We do an exercise in the class where we line up two investors and they both have an average 5% return. For investor A, their early years were good and they were fine. Investor B, their early years were bad. They had negative years in the stock market and they're pulling money out during the negative years and they run out of money. Michael, actually, that exercise that you're talking about was actually, it's 10%. You said five. They were pulling 5% out of the portfolio, but the average growth rate was 10%. You summarize it really good, right? They ran out of money in 17 years. That's a portfolio. Listen, everyone hear this. This person had an average return over a 20-year period of 10% per year. That's their average return. All they did was take 5% a year out of that portfolio to live on, but yet they ran out of money. It was zero after 17 years. It was gone. Because they did not account for the sequence of return risk. They had bad years early. They took money out when the market was down, when their portfolios were down. And even when they had their good years late to give them a nice shiny rate of return on average, They had less money in the portfolio to recover. It's so great, Michael, because when you see people's face, then we can take a a portfolio over a 20-year period that has an average return of 4%, taking out 5% a year, and there's this surplus of money at the end because they did not pull money from accounts that were down early. 
They pulled money out of accounts that didn't have risk early. So it's when do I take income from which accounts? What tools do I use to make sure I can take income from accounts early without risk? That's sort of the secret, isn't it, Michael? I mean, the, it's this analogy I use in the class. All of, every, all of our listeners here, people who attend our class, they often have beautiful, I use the analogy of a house. You're building a house, right? And you all have this furniture and storage. All of you have this investment, social security, pensions, lump sums, all these things that you're deciding and you have, but you haven't constructed your house yet. And what you find when you build your house, build your retirement plan, Many of your, much of your furniture doesn't fit in your new house. A lot of your investments won't work in your new plan because it's the wrong investments for your retirement plan. I'm telling you, investing your money when you're young is really quite easy. Just buy an index fund. You don't need an advisor. Don't waste the money. Just leave it alone. Don't look at your statements and you will win very, very, very different in retirement. It is your income planning when you're taking money out of which accounts at what age so that you don't outlive your money. So this stupid 4% rule our industry is created so they can be most profitable is about them. It's not about the client. It's nothing to do with the client. If someone would just take the time to map out the right income plan and know the right strategies to use when, which takes 20 to 50 hours to do per person, they will win. You will win and you won't outlive your money. And this is what we're teaching in our classes. This is why we started our nonprofit organization over almost 10 years ago now. And we're teaching these seven hour courses at all the major universities, Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State, Oakland University. We're teaching in our learning center right here in Livonia. And since COVID, we are now streaming these classes live while you're sitting in your own home. We'll ship you the 200-page textbook if you don't want to come in person. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can attend the seven-hour course. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.